glass bit pens are just beautiful. They vary in price from a couple of quid to whatever you fancy paying. And I thought I would go through some tips on how to use them, which inks work with them, which inks don't, a few tips about how to look after them and get the most out of them. And all this is in relation to, to drawing and painting rather than calligraphy. So my name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire. And every week I try and bring you a tip or trick that I wish someone had told me about ages ago and this week it's all about glass dip pens just how good are they so these are just a few of my collection of glass dip pens um, as you can see I got a little bit carried away when I discovered them because I kept seeing really pretty ones so there's one main difference in the type of dip pens you can get there are the, there are two sorts and it's all to do with the grooves that hold the ink. You can either get them with straight grooves that just run right down to the nib or with spiral grooves that go round the nib. And the one with spiral grooves holds more ink because they're longer. So if you have the option, I would go for ones with spiral grooves. However, you'll be pleasantly surprised how much ink both of them hold. But I'll show you that in a second. Let's just pop those there. So when you get um, your, your glass dip pen, you've probably just ordered it off the internet, it might come with like a little pillow. That's just a, a nice rest for it when you're using it. Or you might get a set like this, and I have to say a big shout out to uh, Carol who gave this to me. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So it comes with a beautiful little rest, the pen, and with some dipping ink. So, you know, you might get a complete set. In fact, I reckon you could even use that as a pendant. It's so beautiful, you could use that as a glass pendant. Anyway, there you go, very versatile, jewellery and uh, drawing instrument in one. The handle and the aesthetics of the handle, frankly, are just, you know, for show and for prettiness. Um, this one's got some glitter inside, which is all very lovely. This one has got iridescence, which is very pretty. And, um, you know, that one's kind of fairly plain, to be honest. Do you want to think how they feel when you write? Quite nice to have maybe a you know comfortable grip there. Something like this, which is absolutely stunning, isn't brilliant to write with or draw with. So, you know, do think about it rather than just getting carried away with the pretty patterns. So let's have a look at this one just to put it through its paces. So this one happens to come with a little pillow and with some orange ink. So let's think about the advantages and the disadvantages of the, the glass pen. But first of all, let me show you how long one dip goes on for. Because that's the main sort of... Um, concern people have is they are going to be dipping forever they think because of course glass isn't absorbent and they think oh I'll be dipping forever and it'll get really boring and it'll really disrupt the flow of my drawing. Well can you see that is from one dip and I haven't had to go back so I hope that immediately puts your mind at rest. In fact I'm getting a little bit bored because it's not running out. So what what are the advantages? Let's dip again. Well, I think the sheer beauty of them as an implement is, is one of their advantages. I think the other thing that's really an advantage is how easy they are to clean because literally you swish it in water and off you go. So it's also super easy to change colours if you want to. You clean it in water and um, dip it in the next colour. In fact, you could even double dip it and get two different colours on, on the nib at the same time to blend. It does give an incredibly uniform line. You saw 
that it just went on and on and it's a, a very thin uniform line so that's good and it does hold way more ink um, than say a metal nib and, and holder. I think the, the downside is of course its fragility I can't just spell now, fragile, that's because it's glass. If you drop it, it will break. And the biggest danger is that you jab it in your bottle of ink and you break the nib, you clonk it on the bottom, you break the nib. So its fragility is certainly a downside. And I guess it isn't flexible. Um, with other dip pens, you press harder, you get a thick line, but with with the glass pen it's you know that is the line you get no matter how hard or or soft you you press you know if you want a thicker line you have to go over it again i mean people say oh are they in different qualities um i have to say out of my collection of dip pens and i've got about 20 now i haven't found one that doesn't write nicely they feel nice to draw with, they glide. I mean, care-wise, say to clean them, literally swish them in water and there it is, it's clean. It doesn't absorb into the, the glass, it's not going to rust like other nibs. So cleaning is, is really easy. They usually come in a protective box, so storage just put it back in its box you know you would not take this out to go urban sketching or you know on plein air sketching i think because you could very easily drop it and break it should you break the nib say it is can be prone to to chipping i have heard that you could get a very fine wet and dry sandpaper and try regrinding the nib if it's just a chip obviously if you snap the whole thing tough but you could regrind that nib if you want want to now let's have a look at which inks work best with it so i've got a selection of inks here which i thought we'd have a little go at um, we've already seen the little dipping ink that came with it um let's have a look i thought we'd try a fountain pen ink i thought we would try FW which is um, an acrylic ink. I've got a metallic Windsor & Newton metallic gold ink. Need to shake it to sort of activate the gold. I thought we'd try that. Um, I've got Windsor & Newton drawing inks. And then I thought we'd also try Ecoline which is a, a liquid watercolour and I thought we'd try ordinary watercolour as well so that should give us a, a nice range oh gosh how could I have forgotten it my good old Indian ink that I drink for breakfast so what I'm going to do is try out these inks I'm going to put them I've got my little homemade uh, concertina sketchbook here I'm going to try them all out in here and see which ones work or show you which ones work and uh, which ones are a bit problematic here I'm loading the nib with a brush with diluted watercolour. You'll find it's a bit drippy if you're not careful. But actually, once you start drawing with it, it works really, really well and you get a beautiful fine line. Using the liquid watercolour, Ecoline, works just as well and you can dip it uh, just as you would with ink. So that's probably more convenient if you happen to have that. And again, flows beautifully and gives a lovely lovely line the next thing is ordinary drawing ink which as you expect works well this happens to be a Windsor and Newton one but any, any drawing ink um, will flow nicely off the nib which is brilliant and then I'm delighted to say that good old Indian ink which of course is waterproof um, works brilliantly so I end up using this for a lot of my line and wash work it's fab and then we go on the acrylic inks FW inks are fab and again they're waterproof and come in all sorts of different colors and they flow off the glass nib really really well 
And then the final one that I'm trying in, is just an ordinary fountain pen ink, which again, now you can get in all sorts of different colours. Problem is, they're not light resistant and usually not waterproof. The three things that I'm going to show you that don't work, well, two are pretty much the same. It's a metallic ink, the gold metallic ink. Nope, doesn't flow off there. I think it's a particle size. And this lovely copper ink, again, oh, barely, barely writes. Uh, it must be the particle size in it. And just in case you thought about using it for masking fluid, which is a great idea, don't bother, doesn't work. Sorry. So I hope that little demonstration just show that the inks that you use with a glass pen really have to be very liquid, like watercolouring consistency. Anything thick will just not flow down those little grooves. So the answer to the question, how good are these glass dip pens? Really good.